Traditions training here at FDIC in the uh, glass booth that everybody's looking in at us at and waving and distracting us. Um, that's why we have a Halligan bar sitting on the table. If somebody gets too out of control, Sam can uh, forcibly uh, remove them uh, from the booth. But um, uh, what a great... What a great atmosphere. The, the hall's filling up. It's, it's, it's been fabulous so far. Um, these three gentlemen all just got done uh, doing a hands-on class. So uh, to my right, my first is uh, Sam Hiddle. Th thank you for speaking. Stand up. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Roger Steger and uh, Danny Doyle, all uh, legacy members of Traditions Training. And, uh, How you doing? They're all instructors here at FDIC and ready to get going for the day. So. I mean, this is a. Why do we have a Halleck bar sitting on the table, by the way? Yeah, why not? Is this is Sam this a Sammy thing? Sam, Sam it. carries it with yeah. him at all times. He Sleeps can tell you how that. many pounds of force it is. And yeah. yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> do you have a class? Do you have a class, by the way? No, okay. not this year. Okay, because they couldn't they couldn't put enough hours in the day around to feed the fucking Halleck bar. <laughs> Hey, yo. 16 hour breakout <laughs> sessions. Yes. You're not going to do the flip joke. 7,225 <laughs> slides in 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the keys are in the details. <laughs> but so it's, uh, you know, we do, we do the, obviously we do this event uh, every, every other month with uh, fire engineering uh, training with fire engineering hump day hangout. So now we get to do it live. So, but now that we're at FDIC, uh, you know, it, obviously the I stands for instructors. So, one of the things we want to kind of talk about was uh, instructor influences, and um, I'll speak about the one that is uh, most dear to this company is our, is our founder. Peter Lum was a lieutenant of the New York City Fire Department and a member of the Kent Land Volunteer Fire Department, where both Roger and I uh, um, have our uh, lives staked in. Obviously, Danny and uh, Sammy have visited, but um, so Peter uh, survived 9-11, you know, uh, thank God, and was able to get ready to retire from the FDNY and decided that he wanted to pass on what he had learned. Um, it, was, it was an interesting conversation. You know, I'm honored that he's one of my, one of my closest friends and just basically said, hey, uh, I have 30 years of uh, education, 30 years of FDNY, 30 years of Ride and Rescue 2, Rescue 3, Tower Ladder 120, and all this information, and none of it's covered in any book. It's not covered in a Delmar book. It's not covered in an IFSTA book. It's not covered in any of those books. So how do I get this information out? And I said, well, we'll go start a company. Um, so we started a company to, to go out and teach uh, what we, he was calling uh, Street Smarts. And he was able to uh, you know, obviously start, we did about a year with that of classes. And then on, unfortunately in, in 2015, we lost Pete in a line of duty death in uh, Woodmere, New York. Uh, he was putting a fire out. So uh, obviously it's, that was a happy time for him even though he was usually on the rescue company. So I'm sure that nozzle thing that you guys are, you're so well, you know, well versed in Roger. Uh, didn't go over too well, but so uh, Peter left a long and lasting impression not only on traditions training, but we still teach uh, classes in his name and his methodology and the things that he wanted to teach. So uh, that's probably the most important person in my life and the most important person in this company. And um, so that that's that's critical. But all of us have instructors or people that have taught us that that mean a ton to us or have had an impact on us. I mean, you know, one that I'm going to talk about later on so you guys don't steal it, you know, is obviously Bill Gustin. So, um, but so we're going to start with Sammy because Sammy's had the question for a couple hours but didn't tell the other two. Um, so I think that was a ploy. It always happens that way. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start with Sammy. So Sammy Hiddle is a, a captain on the rescue in the Wichita Fire Department. Uh, if you don't follow Sammy enough, uh, Sammy's a great force entry guy and obviously he's going to do a lot of stuff with fire engineering to help promote that fire engineering, I mean, forcible entry stuff. Yeah, we, uh, we're at, uh, Chief Rhodes and I are working on some stuff right now, actually. So hopefully that releases soon. That's all you got? That's all I got. Remember, I have a question there. Yeah, There's no, I'm going to wait till you ask it. Oh, sorry. So, Sammy, tell me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, this I is gonna be fun. and we agreed to this, right? <laughs> this is going to be fun. I, I, I can see it's going to be fun. It's challenge Ricky Day. It's fun for somebody. Cool, it's like cool. a, all three of you have challenged me in all different times. You're a better person because of us. <laughs> yes, you put exactly. yourself in the corner also. Not true. I did. <laughs> um, so, Sammy, give me a, an instructor or an influence. Let's just stick with an instructor. Somebody that taught you something that has benefited your career, benefited your life, whatever it is. So when it comes to mentors or instructors, I mean, it really comes down to the topic or I, I don't believe that one person has got it all figured out. So when I look at mentors, I look at um, this guy is going to be able to help me develop and grow here. Um, this guy is going to help me develop and grow over here. Um, so I, I don't really uh, 
narrow it down to one person. But if I have to, uh, if I have to say a name, it's going to be John Turner, and he was uh, he was a battalion chief for us before he left um, the job. Uh, at the time I came into the Wichita Fire Department, he was a captain, and he took me in. He um, he told me, you know, you need to read this literature. Um, you need to develop these skills, and so he he really set the foundation of what it was to to be a fireman, and what it meant to be a professional, and to uh, you know he I always blame him for ruining my career because he basically said this is what you need to be if you want to be good. You're blaming one guy for what you're doing in your career. I Correct. Make, make, make sure that's right. I think it's only fair to blame one person at a time. I can only imagine. Too bad we can't call him and get his opinion on that one. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, skip uh, Roger and go to the end of down here to Danny Duel. Danny Duel is uh, once again one of our uh, legacy instructors, been with us uh, almost from the start. So that's we're almost to 20 plus years now. Why you got to date yourself? As like, I know, kids. Well, I, it's easy to date me by my <laughs> by my hair. I, I have a face for radio, not for uh, on video. But so Danny's been with us a very long time, and so. Uh, Danny's had uh, a, a career that spans from the Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department, uh, a volunteer organization, and now your career organization in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So yeah. there's got to be somebody along that line there. That uh, honestly, even if even if I had the two hours to think about it, I don't know that I could whittle it down to one single person. I mean, there are tons of mentors uh, and instructors. In all honesty, the three of you sitting up here and several other people in our group. Um, it's a, I think it's a very distinguished group, and it was an honor to be part of it. But honestly, sitting here and, and kind of going through my mind, uh, the one person that I would go back to, uh, I, was, I was raised by my grandparents. And what made me catch the fire bug, if, if you will, at a very early age was my grandfather. Um, I was hanging around the firehouse at the age of five and never left. I quit sports in high school so I could spend more time at the firehouse. Sounds familiar. Um, he would take me on every call with him. I would learn from him. He was the original instructor for me. And I'm, I mean, a lot of people would talk about, reference their dads or their grandparents and things like that. But truly for the fire service, even you take the family portion out of it, he, he is the person that put me on the track, if you will, to where I am today, to, to meet all of you over time. and work in the places that I did and uh, man I, I could sit here for a very long time and talk about some people and the the other person that I would like to mention in this and, and I know this is going to morph into another discussion is a very 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 close friend of mine that we lost this past August uh, Roger actually has his shirt on Jim Ellis um, he was my very close friend uh, we taught together for years uh, he was a, a, a part of traditions for a little while and uh, lost a, a piece of me whenever we lost him. So, but uh, but those but I mean, go the back. I mean, he had a, he had. I mean, he was like you know, start with what he started with. <clears throat> I mean, you know, he became fam not famous for because he would never want to be a famous person. But sure. you know, Jimmy started you know this Ritz stuff and oh, yeah. you know, what, explain all that because that's big stuff. I mean, I think Jimmy Jimmy spent uh, the better part of 15 years out here uh, teaching with Jim Crawford's uh, Ritz crew um, and. You know, him with several other guys from Pittsburgh as well that Jim brought out here and, and encouraged them to morph into themselves as well and, and do separate lectures and so on and so forth. But, but Jimmy, Jimmy uh, loved coming to FDIC, absolutely loved it. In fact, uh, well, there's several stories that I probably can't <laughs> tell uh, here in the podcast, but you probably. know, just the camaraderie, yes. um, the, the ability, he had the utmost ability to see the best in everyone treat everybody appropriately um, even though that he was extremely educated and good at his job um, he could come down to anyone's level um, no matter what his mood was uh, or where he was to be able to articulate what he was trying to get across to somebody and I, I struggle with that sometimes not not being above or below anybody or anything like that but but uh, being able to adapt in the middle of a conversation like that and he he could that was a true quality of his and he he really would put that to work here. He, he did it in the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire um, within his volunteer organization, the Adams Area Volunteer Fire Department in uh, Adams Township, just north of, of uh, Pittsburgh. So he he was able to adapt and overcome in the fire service and with people and just, he was, he was, he was a great individual. So that would be my two 
definitely my two go-tos in my life. But, you know, like Sammy said, it's not the only ones. It's okay. No, no. <laughs> that, there's, we there's all know there's hundreds of them in our lives. So we're not trying and to leave anybody out. or A lot of great people. And, I mean, it, you know, I, I hope this conversation morphs into different questions similar to that because there's other names that I would like to put out there. But I, I feel that I owe a lot of where I am today and, and what I've accomplished in my career um, to them. So I understand. So this yeah. one's even going to be more interesting when I ask Roger <laughs> this question, because unlike Sammy and Danny, I have known Roger since he was born, literally in diapers. Uh, and now I'm glad I don't care. Do you still? I mean, he could still wear diapers. It is, it is Roger. Um, you never know what could happen there. He's my <laughs> Stop. Stop. I've witnessed this. this, is, this is, there may, be, may or may not be a box of adult diapers in the corner of the hotel room. No, I'm just kidding. But I used, so, uh, I used to like sharing a room with you. <laughs> <laughs> Rogers uh, had a, a really great career starting in his, his hometown fire company, Ocean City, where, where I grew up. His dad was the volunteer chief there. Uh, came up to the Washington metropolitan area, got the Howard County Fire Department, and then uh, is now a, a uh, firefighter with the Baltimore City Fire Department at Engine 8. If you don't follow uh, 8 by 10 on social media, you're missing something. Uh, you want to see a company that goes to fires and... Uh, videos them all which is a great thing uh so we can use them for training uh, you know that that's a great thing so you know roger hit me with you who your mentors or instructors are you know that influenced you i'm just going to echo everybody else and say there's too many to list but I understand uh, yeah. now i've been fortunate enough throughout uh, my life and career to be around the right places uh, at the right times to meet very interesting people and be able to take good things and bad things away from some so take the bad things and know not to repeat those but probably two of the biggest uh just time wise you just mentioned both of them uh, <laughs> uh yourself and my father so yeah i don't know if i go with your dad when on me so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> different time different time much better guy now so two polar opposites for uh, exactly. a long while but i was fortunate when i started in the fire service to have both both ends of the spectrum but both of them were very passionate both uh, you and Dad, on uh, on what you believed in, how how you saw the fire service, and what you did, even though you didn't agree on things. And yep. at one point, I thought I was going to lose my inheritance or get kicked out of the I'm family. I'm sure you uh, were. I'm sure you were. <clears throat> when I came home for Christmas and was like, "Oh, I'm moving to Kentland when I go back," it's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to talk to me for a couple weeks, but soon got over that. Uh, but just teaching what. It's okay to be passionate, yeah. to love the job, uh, to learn, learn from mistakes, but uh, to make a decision. So not to have uh, inaction, but to take action, even if it's the wrong action and you get called in the chief's office at midnight to explain yourself. <laughs> as long as you learn from it and don't repeat it, it'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I, I, did, I mean, obviously, we, we all watched uh, Chief Rhodes' uh, speech this morning. What an, what an incredible uh, way to look at it and to understand, you know, it's okay to be passionate and, um, you know. But so you guys for the last three days um, have been teaching uh, younger firefighters. So and then that's all I hear about a lot of days is, oh, the younger generation, the younger generation, they're going to ruin the fire service. They're going to be terrible. I mean, so how many students did you guys? So. You know, obviously, Champ uh, is leads your group, right? Yep. And yeah. uh, you guys have been doing that for how many years now with Champ? Number two, we refer to him as now. Uh, <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Yeah. Uh, was it twelve? Yeah, twelve ten, years. Ten, I believe twelve, it's 12 years. years. Yeah. yeah. So, man, so you had how I many? How many students you guys go through in two days? About 120. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 120 so, from all across time. the country, obviously, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah. and Canada. Okay. Australia, uh, yep. yeah, Australia. yeah, we had a couple from Australia. So, I mean, what did you see? I mean, obviously, you had a bunch of young kids in there, probably, right? Uh, more than we thought. Uh, we asked them to raise their hand, and uh, probably about two thirds is their first time here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that was actually pretty encouraging. Cause Are they ruining the fire service? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, no, no. If uh, if they don't do well, uh, is it their fault or is it our fault? Um, and if they're not doing well, it's our fault. That's the way I look at it. So, no, I don't think they're ruining the fire service. I mean, it, attentive, you know, 
ready to practice skills? I mean, what is what are you guys seeing? I mean, no, I, I thought it was incredibly encouraging um, to see that many new people here. Um, you know, especially if they're young in their career and they can learn from some of the best people in the country. You know, I'm not just referring to our class, um, although you know we've got some talent um, in Champs Group. But if they can learn um, street level stuff that actually works instead of being theoretical, and take that back and develop it. If if you want to change something, you you go after the young. Um, you you just have to realize the people who plant the trees don't enjoy the shade. Is, is everybody silent over that now? Or? I thought I thought we needed that's a deep, good, Sam. That's that deep. was so deep. We needed a pause after. We needed a minute to make sure everybody that. understood it. But so, I mean, where were you guys? I mean, the group uh, that we had, like like Sam said, two thirds or so was their first time at FDIC, first time doing hot here. Uh, but of that group, there's probably a dozen each day, maybe a little bit more, that were under 25 years old. Ooh. So, and we ran the gamut. We had probably a 20 year old all the way up to pushing 60 just trying to look back through the faces over the last week rally time frame wise brand new on the job to probably 25 year veterans or more and the majority of them they stayed attentive they stayed wanting to learn uh, asking good questions so uh, like Sam will say a lot like you, you know you're getting them kind of when like they're asking a question not that gets a yes or no answer but something like thought provoking they're actually thinking about what you're showing and watching the progression change from when they first picked up the, the howling bar on the first boy, forceful entry station to getting a few reps in with it and it, it starts forming and you can see it clicking in their heads so yeah they're paying attention <laughs> so i don't quite understand how so this is a truck class so how are you involved in this danny <laughs> exactly. actually yeah yeah i know i'm going with danny guys. we're both engine guys yeah. but, uh well now we're both engine guys we both love the truck company but um somebody had to tell actually, them what it looks uh, like inside uh, two things though just to add on to what roger was saying something that i saw that was kind of cool a lot of the younger folks that were coming through the class that um you know what what champ wanted us to focus on this this particular year was kind of beyond the academy kind of try to advance our conversation a little bit with, with folks. A lot of times you're presented with a wide variety of, of people coming in. One, you know, one side of that pendulum is uh, not much experience at all or just in the agency that they're in. They don't run a dynamic amount of calls compared to some other folks that might come in from large metro departments or you know places that see a ton of work or things like that. Uh, but that inexperience and those younger folks uh, what was kind of cool is in between stations, um, a little bit of downtime, you would see other people that they met on the bus that were a little bit older, that had been on the job for a little while or might be in a busier place. After they meet and they, they, they have a conversation, they go through the station a couple times, you would see somebody else kind of mentoring them a little bit. They would ask them a question while we're still talking and they would chip in. So it was kind of nice to see people like us that have been around the fire service for a little while that were in the class would lean over and help them absorb what we were trying to lay down in front of them for them to learn. So it was kind of cool the way that I, I did get to see that in the search station we did a few times mm -hmm. and that was that was pretty neat. But to answer your question, to answer <laughs> your question, question, we did pull it, we reeled in the engine company into the class a little bit uh, and we talked about a little bit about what it's like to search off of hand lines, stuff like that, encountering victims. Um, because in a lot of departments, a lot of places don't think, don't do things like the FDNY. The truck company isn't always the first uh, crew in. In fact, I would have to say the larger percentage of America, that, that is not the case. So most of your victims are found from a hose line as they're going in. So we, we, we uh, you know, find little spots to That's interject. That's just something engine people inter say. Interject uh, a little bit of <laughs> engine work in there, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, so there was a bunch of stations. So I assume the clogging point was Sammy Station. That's where everything got backed up because <laughs> he goes up on a roof and just eats shingles. He doesn't even use a saw. <laughs> he just eats his way through. What shot? Uh, they yeah, they figured that out. They uh, gave a lot of extra people to help this year. Yeah. So, so all the kids were, all the people in the class were just trying to figure out the words that Sammy was using. <laughs> trying to figure out exactly what they meant. Yeah, we had googling them. We had it. Yeah. 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 We allowed them to have their phones so they could Google <laughs> Translate. Oh, man. So yeah, here, here, so we got you know we got another couple days. Uh, I mean, obviously some people are moving out. So what what instructor are we going to go see as for a class? You know that you're going to go see. 
You were actually here instead of the one you wanted to see. No, no, I, I've, I've had the time frame off. Okay. There when you, you go. told me that this was three and not two, <laughs> we'll, we'll, try to, we'll, we'll try to kick it out. Maybe. Was, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I was going to go pop into uh, Stephen Shaw's class from uh, Fort Lauderdale. So, uh, Chief Shaw presents very well, and uh, he's doing a class on instruction and teaching. Uh, so, I've sat through, done a couple conferences with uh, Steve before, so. I like uh, his style and how he presents, so I'm just going to go pop in there and see if I can pick up some, some things from him. Uh, the most important thing I wanted to see here was uh, Chief Rhodes. Um, uh, the direction of this um, and the influence that this uh, place has on the fire service um, cannot be understated. So um, to hear him come out and, and introduce himself and let people figure out um, what he believes in, which I think he made very, very clear at the uh, at the end of his speech um, that's what I wanted to see and he, he did a great job uh, I'm very very excited about where we're going I, I would I would agree with that statement I think they made an absolutely incredible choice for both one and two um, and uh, so I, I I'm, I'm curious to see where it takes us in future FDICs or fire engineering in general um, maybe uh, yeah I, I think that would be a, a very interesting um, you know, course, uh, I, I think we're going to see some changes. Uh, but oh, I, the, the one thing that I do want to do is uh, I want to stop in and see Steve Robertson's lecture. Um, he's not only a good friend, he's very good at what he does. He's an engine company lieutenant on Engine 18 in Columbus. And he's doing a lot of good things. He's, he's working hand in hand with, with Ray McCormick, UL, um, Elkhart, uh, putting out a lot of good information. So I think that's uh, it's going to be a good presentation to take a look at. That was too much. <laughs> Looking back at me. Yeah. Next question. question. So, next yeah, you want to ask me a question? Oh, yeah. Next you question, Dad. Who, huh? yeah. Who are you going to go see? I, well, I'm upset because I missed the one I wanted to go see. It was Bill Gustin because uh, mm. Bill usually teaches a four hour session and then an hour 45, and that's hour 45 is usually the one I get. But he, he taught on Monday, and um, we go back to the instructor question, and I, I tried to figure out where how I met Bill and uh, I, I was telling him yesterday, I said, you know, we go out, you know, you know, traditions, we have a, a home turf that we kind of teach all our classes in. And we're very fortunate when people outside our home turf, you know, we get to travel across the country. Sure. But our home turf, you know, as I always say, man, if you see Bill Gustin, did you, you know who Bill Gustin is? And because it's always in reference to, you know, the first time I met Bill Gustin, you know, Bill Gustin realized I was from Kentland. And he goes, you know, they're just one level above a street gang, right? You know, it's <laughs> like some gangs in New York. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, this is the first time I met you. But he reminds me a lot of Pete. Um, obviously, two different people. Um, vastly, they, you know. But Bill can, I, I watch him go teach a class, and he'll talk to the kid that is 19 years old and can relate to that 19 year old and bill's old i mean he, there should be a life alert around his neck Let's no, not there's, get... there's a silver alert out for him right now exactly especially when he's out you know in his shorts and you know t-shirts doing his butt. but um you know if you watch he's teaching at the miami dade fire academy and just he's, he be, he's able to relate to the new recruit that's just coming on that probably had no idea what he's getting into uh, just he found out hey good pay uh, i only work uh, 10 days a month and you know, it's not to be, and I get to a lot of days off. And then Bill turns those people into firefighters. And then, you know, he, he talks to the 30 year guy, the 35 year guy, or woman that's in the fire service and can relate to them also. And just, he, he does, he is not above any of us. And that is, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, even when Sam is talking about Chief Rhodes, um, you know, you'd meet, the only way I know Chief Rhodes is from walking in the street here walk in the street and he would stop and shake your hand and say hello when he was the logistics manager. So that is, is that the number two spot now? Is no. That, no. Just, no. I, these, these guys are much more into the politics of fire engineering hot stuff than I am. I go to Sammy for all my information. Uh, so do I. Uh, so, but I mean, shake your hand, say hello. Um, you know, it was interesting to see the progression and then watching him today, like Sammy said, um, you know, Bobby left some big shoes to fill huge shoes to fill and I think you know Chief Rhodes is ready to step that up and he's going to even make us better I think his his network is different um, and I think that's going to be be great for the conference it's going to be great for fire engineering and uh, the articles that you're going to see 
um, I think we're going to be in a really good direction. So yeah, definitely. And you know, you, you talk about uh, Gustin. Uh, I guarantee you, he right now he's sitting front row in someone's class, oh, yeah. um, taking notes. So you know, when he tries to lead those young guys, uh, he does it by example. He, he's the kind of instructor that um, continues to learn and also is willing to do it. Um, and he's done a lot for the fire service. So yes, I, I he, completely agree with you. There's only there, there, there's two people like him. So there's Bill Gustin and John Salko. They're the only two people who can say exactly what they want to say, get away with it with no chance of getting canceled. Yes. I mean, I just yeah. – the stuff that comes out of those two mouths, I'm like, there's yeah, like hashtag weird. cancel, you know, right next to it. But nothing ever happens. But they tell the truth, and that's, uh, and that's a good thing, and people yeah, listen is. to it. So It is. But what else is going on here? What, what, so let's talk about traditions for a second since we're, we're talking about traditions. So. Good. I mean, we're um, – you know, we're we're an old company. You know, we're I mean, goodness gracious, we're almost 22 years old as yeah. a company. We were here before Facebook, so yeah. MySpace. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we were, were here, here before, before all that. Facebook. Was there a MySpace? Um, yeah. yeah, there was not a MySpace page. I guarantee you. <laughs> what was the theme um, song? Uh, but yeah, oh, but I mean, speaking of Chief Rhodes, I mean, we were. Uh, there's the boss right there. And there goes Steve so, too. Yeah. But uh, just uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're getting uh, we're getting some outside Come interference in. from uh, the, Chief the boss is heckling. The water is fine. Uh oh, yeah. Sam, you're in trouble. Are we going to take bets? I'm going to be verbally assaulted within 30 seconds of him walking. I think the the boss is walking in here. Yeah, he is. So, Chief Rhodes, how are you, sir? Good, good, good. Good to see you. I brought you, Sam sir? some fingernail clippers. <laughs> <laughs> I win the bet because, as you can see, before my big presentation this morning last night sam gave me a battle scar over here and i actually had to go to hair and makeup well just makeup mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys are awesome keep doing it thank thank you, chief. thanks chief. Good day. all right so what do i win <laughs> what did you do to him uh yeah he came up sat on my lap and when i reached around i might have uh, tried to make him bleed out <laughs> not from your head injury oh, no oh, man where were we, by the way? Because now I'm totally For the sure. head injury? The no. head injury was once. <laughs> oh, we're talking about the company. So. Yes. But, yeah, so <laughs> I'm a little confused. <laughs> oh, this is what you get it's for hanging around with right Sammy. There. You get all, it's you know, all the people pushing their faces against the glass. And <laughs> maybe some rear ends. I don't know which one it is. But, but uh, so, I mean, we, you know, we, uh, the strength of our company is in our relationships with people. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that we, we've always wanted to do. I think that's what all Pete wanted to do was to meet people and get to know people um, and, and spread the good word. It wasn't about anything else. There was no ulterior motive into that. Um, he just wanted us to go out, um, spread what Engine 8's doing and Engine 8 too, right? Uh, no, used not to be. anymore. Engine 10. Oh, now, good number. Yeah, I went, I went back home, right? I Great went number. back home. You know, what, it, what Engine 10's doing. You went from an engine to an engine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most people get better. <laughs> well, you went to an elevator emergency room. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's, uh, so, you know, no, as we, as a company, as we, as we, you know, keep uh, doing classes, uh, uh, I would say mostly it's for our friends and the people that we've met along the way. Yeah. And, and, th- and that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we love talking to new people. Um, We'll produce what we can produce, but uh, obviously we have a great relationship with this organization. Fire engineering uh, highlights a lot of our instructors, which is you know thrilling to watch. I get to go stand in the back and watch the guy that I had on my knee in diapers uh, <laughs> teaching you know 150 people about you know engine company operations or anything like that. And watching this guy talk is uh, unbelievable. So if you haven't sat on any Sammy's classes, um, when you I know you're going to teach next year, he's not going to let you. <laughs> not not teach next year. Yeah, leave yeah, Google open on your case. phone. Yeah, You'll have I mean to the best the best words. class that I've ever saw was Sammy tried to teach a three hundred. We had three hundred people in a class in Lancaster, in uh, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. That's a real name, by the way. It's right between Blue Balls and <laughs> Burdenham. And, yeah, and Burdenham yep. uh, is Intercourse, and there was three hundred uh, great great people uh, that were there. They were learning how to uh, use thermal imagers. And they were mostly Amish, and I was confused. <laughs> so I had like, they look, Sam, you gotta, gotta turn this one down, my friend. I don't, I don't even understand what you're talking about. So I, the only reason I can understand it now is because I sat through the class like three times. Um, but you know, incredible, incredible amount of knowledge sitting here. All of our instructors. Um, I can't say enough about the effort that they put in 
uh, not for traditions training, but for bettering the fire service. So we don't do a, a, you know, a lot of pay classes now. We go out and do the micro conferences. So, you know, Sammy does a, a lot of stuff with Andy Fredericks. And, you know, uh, Roger does a lot of stuff with these micro conferences are uh, popping up across the country. Um, obviously, you know, the big show is the big show. Every, this is where you want to be. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of those conferences around, and these guys are going out and teaching, um, you know, for a flight and a meal. Um, and, and making sure they get that message out that, that Pete wanted us to get out was what's happening in Wichita, what's happening in Baltimore City, what's happening in Pittsburgh, um, because there is no one geographic area that's perfect. I mean, sure. you know, I think Danny said, it well, you know, we can't, we can't teach how we do searches in New York City. I mean, uh, just the sheer amount of people that they send is, you know, I always thought I, they've never had a room in contents fire there because they would all just <laughs> send the box alarm in, they'd all take a deep breath, and the fire would go out from lack of oxygen uh, just by the sheer amount of people there. But, yeah. you know, we can't, you can't teach New York tactics to a company that is getting four people out on a fire truck after – a seven-minute, you know, home response. So. 100%, yeah. And yeah, that's what's uh, that's one of the things that's beautiful the way they structure the hands-on classes and and we were. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, where was I? Yeah. Now you know why I'm sitting <laughs> yeah, this right? way. Yeah. And not this, looking at this that. is a keep mess. Looking at Ricky, <laughs> this so is entertainment. Yeah. But uh, the way they've structured the hands-on classes, you get people from all over the country, and so you you really, um, as Larry Schultz um, says, you you get perspective. Um, you could be listening to somebody teach you who goes to fires with 50 people, or you could be listening to somebody who has is restricted to 15 or 18 people on a fire ground. And so you, you get that broad range of perspective, which is nice. And, and it, there's something that, that is really uh, satisfying, which goes back to the foundation of the company. When you, you're not trying to change their tactics, you're trying to change pieces of it so they can be more effective. And, and when you say, hey, try this, and you see them be more successful than when they tried it a minute before. Um, it, it really is worth coming out here. And I mean, I, I make the mistake, and somebody, you got, I mean, there's a video clip of Pete teaching a class, and you know, it's like, you know, you're not going to change the world. So, you know, you go to an eight hour class with Sammy, you go to an eight hour class with Danny or Roger, and you're going to get, you know, your mind's going to get filled with information for eight hours. And as Pete said, he is, you're not going to change the world, but if you can change one thing, you know, change, you know, the way we operate a thermal imager, the way that we, they whip the nozzle, you know, the way, whatever Danny does in Danny world. Um, you know. Choose on stones. <laughs> yeah, choose on stones. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, that little piece and take it back with you. There's, you know, you, you got to look outside your geographic area. You can't be stuck in the Wichita Fire Department. You can't be stuck in Baltimore. You can't be stuck in, in the county that I work with or in Pittsburgh and go, this is the only way we can operate. You know, that's why you come here to hear from, you know, the, you know, Stephen Shaw from Fort Lauderdale, Bill Gustin from Miami-Dade, you know, everybody yeah. from up north, everybody from New York City, our, our own Doug Mitchell, and all these people listening to what they have to say. And once again, you, you can't take it all and go back to your firehouse and go, uh, we're going to do the Sammy Hiddle way of forcible entry now. Um, one, there's not enough halogen bars, and two, you know, you know. I, don't, I don't think you realize, Rick. There is only one way, and that is the same way. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't know it, it, he will tell you. <laughs> but, but, it, it's constantly evolving. All this fork oh, yes. right here. Well, but I, I got to be honest with you, Rick. What I, what I think is interesting, listening to you guys go back and forth a little bit about TT, FDIC, the fire service in general. But uh, my experience being in TT for Geez, a, a, a better part of 18 years now? Um, wow. I'm getting old. You're old. Yeah, uh, you are old. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless. It's almost like you're forgetting um, what you're saying. <laughs> the, the, to, to look at where we were then uh, as people in our careers, uh, as friends, to where we are now 18 years later, to promotions, to retirements, to you know advancements or, or moving from department to department or however that goes, where we find ourselves, what we're involved in now, families. Um, all of that different set. We kind of watched ourselves grow up, get married, uh, you know, experience different things and become better friends in the same right. Here at FDIC, the group that we teach with in the Truck Company Essentials, um, just, out, just in the past 12 years, we've uh, experienced loss together, uh, we've grown together, we've taught together, we've learned from each other, we know each other's families. Um, we, even though we only get to see each other, what, once, twice a, a year, maybe we cross paths at another uh, teaching events someplace or get to see each other somewhere else talk on the phone but I think you know it speaks to what FDIC is what traditions is the fire service in general and I, I think 
honestly, it need, more people need to get exposed to it. Uh, we talk about leadership a lot in the fire service, but there is still a, a lack of leadership or maybe a need for more, uh, you know, looking at the younger individuals that are coming up in the fire service. Um, getting to experience something similar to what we did here at this table, to be able to sit here at this table. I just think it's a really cool thing. Um, you know, I like the fact that I can call the three of you very close friends, everybody that we just taught with. That means a lot, and it, it really truly influences your career, just, just like Pete wanted it all to in the beginning. Absolutely. I mean, and that's, I'll beat all three of you up for not being promoted and taking the next position because of the influence that you could have. I mean, there's, yeah, keep He's looking, yeah. keep looking around, yeah, all right? If Larry was here, he'd be saying the same thing. Uh, he already you know? yelled at me. He's wearing white. Is that close enough? Uh, yeah, he's wearing white. Right. I mean, the, the fire service is going to miss out if you guys don't get promoted to chiefs and have and expand your influence in your departments. You know, uh, you I think it would be like a fun that. five minutes. <laughs> but. How important it is, so. Well, what do you think? What, what else we got? Everybody's, we'll everybody's we've been on hot, <laughs> with a hot streak here all morning, so it's been on the go. I mean, you guys have been sleeping all morning. No, no, no. I, like I said, I had no. to, I'm not a morning person, but I did get up because I wanted to see Chief Rhodes, and he didn't disappoint. I mean, and that's, you know, and I think that, you know, and a testament to the integrity of this organization, whether, you know, the Clarion Events Group, FDIC, is that, you know, we, we partnered with Chief Halton, you know, a dear, dear friend, you know, great loss for traditions, uh, all of us personally, because, uh, you know, you could always, as Danny stated out, if you had a problem, you could call that guy and he would answer the telephone. Because um, there's a lot of people in that position that would not answer a telephone or to have an underling call or something Absolutely. like that. That guy would answer the telephone. Um, and we have been doing, you know, things with uh, fire engineering and FDIC for decades now. And it's all because of a handshake with Bobby Halton. Um, and I always love that he always reminded us of that. You know, that we didn't need a contract. We weren't here for money. Uh, we were here to uh, help Bobby make the conference better as a small part because we're just a very small part of this great, great big show that goes on here. And now, you know, to be able to, you know, get a, get a phone call from Chief Rhodes and things are s same as they were, um, you know, last year. So, And, and that is nice. I, I remember one time uh, I called Chief Halton and he didn't answer Five minutes later, he called me back and said, sorry, I was in a Senate hearing. <laughs> so, um, but that that's really was how he was. You know, he could be testifying before Congress on something and then and just call a guy from the Midwest because he had a question. You didn't send him a meme that he needed to call back or, or <coughs> no, anything. No. It's never <laughs> just a question with you. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys are setting me up for failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I understand, so. But yeah, I mean, what else, I mean, do we have anything else we need to share, or what? You know, no, no, no. no I just wish everyone a good glad conference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glad glad we're I mean, yeah. I wish, we're sorry, uh, Dan and Dan Shaw and Doug Mitchell aren't here. They're uh, back. They're 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 authors. Everybody use their air quotes. Uh. They're authors. <laughs> uh, so they're down there signing si books. Dan, they're signing books. But you know, I, I, it reminded me a little bit of Dan when Dan was talking about the the span of the FDIC conference, the span of traditions training. Is that when Dan started? Traditions training. He was an engine driver. Yeah. You know, which that really makes him really low. Is you know, being an engine driver, is that? And you know, he <laughs> as I always said, I said I appreciated Dan as an engine driver because he took the engine to all the medical locals so the truck guys could run all the fires. Um, <laughs> you mean sleep? And so you know, Dan was an engine driver. Um, now here we are. That's in early 2000s, and now we're here in 2023. Yeah. And Dan is the uh, operations chief for the largest career fire department in the state of Virginia. So maybe um, we should talk to them about their promotional. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> talk to those two chiefs that promoted Dan. <laughs> so, but you know, once again, uh, you know, two two of our founding instructors, Dan being one of our founding instructors, uh, Doug yeah. came on uh, pretty much at the same time uh, yeah. Danny did. Um, had been with the company. Um, those guys are real busy with life, and just like. Danny alluded to, um, but I got my, my big strong guys here to help me out. Uh, you know, so I'm not sitting up here talking about myself. So, but good conference. That's all you got. Yep, that's all I've got. Raj, no. So have a great week. Keep learning. Uh, don't just spend every night at Kilroy's. Uh, make it to the classes. <laughs> make it to the show. Uh, there's the exhibit hall is. 
immersive. Like it's I am. <laughs> I'm just shocked that a bolt of lightning yeah, uh, did yeah. not come down the street. Do not spend I, your all night worried. at a bar. I am a little worried. I was, right I was, I was, I was looking up. I was <laughs> like, a bolt of lightning is going to come through and strike him. I, I have a question for you before we go. No, we don't. I don't take questions. Uh, I don't speaking of questions. being authors, when are you going to write an apparatus book? Yeah. Oh God, no. <laughs> write yeah. an apparatus book, huh? I love it. Um, matter of fact, that's why I, I'm the only one with a tie on because I have to go teach at 3:30. You know, because I, <laughs> I, I, I actually responded to the call for presentations, <coughs> unlike somebody at the table that did not respond to the call for presentations. But all right, I'll uh, make you a deal. I will go for chief when your book is published. Oh Jesus! So oh, we got to go talk to Diane. It's right? documented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that, Sammy. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm getting ready to teach apparatus at 3:30, and maybe that'll. But you know, I'll, then I could be like Dan and Doug. Oh, he's, he's stuttering yeah. now. I am. I yeah. could be like Dan and Doug. I could go sign yes. books instead of being here. Yes. Yes. We, we won't. We make sure to repeat that like four or five more times for him. Yes. I think we sent the email out. You know. well, we'll just Photoshop him in the back later. <laughs> later. So. <laughs> yes. Danny, we will. I know you always. We'll Photoshop uh, something. Danny's da Danny's one of our. You know, was in every class. And uh, Danny's life's taken a... It was, it was a, like that. Yeah, it was. Time. It was like two or three weekends a month. And yeah. it's a wonder yeah. we all have uh, wives and are, are still yeah. married. And That's why my knees hurt. My yeah. hips are hurting. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I'd be remiss if I, we didn't talk about... Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Mike Champo uh, for the 12 years that we have been able to be part of his group uh, teaching truck essentials. And... And that relationship with, with Bobby that, that you related, you talked about, Rick, uh, brought us out here to FDIC and allowed us to interject into Mike's group. And mm -hmm. he accepted us with open arms. And 12 years later, here we are. Still and uh, you want to talk about mentors and somebody that is one of the, if not the nicest guy in the fire service that is here in this building or in the, in the country. He is, is that man. And uh, I think we all have... Uh, a big heart for him and, and uh, would like to thank him for the time that we, we spent and the respect that he reciprocates to us just for being part of the group and, and uh, always reaches out and stays in touch. So and I just want to make sure that, you know, when you ask somebody um, if they know somebody on another job, you'll hear they're a good fireman or they're a nice guy. Um, and, and Champo is both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he, he, very stand-up gentleman. Yeah. yeah. Is that why he's number two? <laughs> Someday, yes, so yep. sometime so after this, I'm going to know what this all is means, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing along for the time. <laughs> so, Everybody else yeah, is looking around. Now I'm really mean. getting nervous because of the, the amount of giggles that are coming out of everybody's uh, mouth. So, But, hey, uh, that's pretty much from us. Um, you know, i got to get ready to teach a class. These guys are going to go out on the, the floor. And from all of us at Traditions Training, we want to thank uh, the Clarion Events Group, Fire Engineering, uh, Chief Halton and now uh, Chief Rhodes for uh, letting us keep our relationship with the organization, and uh, we're very, we're very, very grateful. We'll, we'll never forget this, uh, forget what they've done for us. So. Absolutely, agreed. So from Danny, Roger, Shittle, yep. and uh, Ricky, <laughs> uh, we're, uh, we're, thanks, and uh, go to some classes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good time. <laughs>